this is the other video. Because I did the video on my experience with colorism. Now I'll do the other video with my experience with um, being being more um, on the definition of what I consider light skin and what I consider brown skin and what I consider dark skin. Yes, I do believe that brown skin exists. And I'm not trying to say that I am light skin to feel better right it's so weird to me because what if it was just to feel better then wouldn't i just feel like faith essence color was better than mine and if we're saying that i don't understand now why are we focused on why are we focused on just faith evidence now like, we live in America, and like 70, maybe 60, probably 70% of black, I mean of America, 70% of America is much lighter than Faith Evans. Faith Evans is still considered dark among 70% of Americans. So if she's considered a dark and she's considered black why would i be looking to that like to me i don't know you see if you listen to my voice you can kind of figure where i grew up you know I, maybe you can't i don't know but every time i go on certain like black channels and go under live calls they tend to think that i'm white the reason why that is is just because of how I grew up. I grew up around a lot of white people. So for me, I guess I'm pointing that out because that's how I see things. I wouldn't think if I really thought that lighter was better, then I would just think white was better. Now, <laughs> I guess maybe you would think that because I only date white men. Um, it's not even that I just date white men. It's just that, like, I've never dated in real life because only dark-skinned black men really come uh, come up to me. And then, like, yeah, if I was talking to a white guy that I was attracted to, then a black man would come because he would think, oh, she's um friendly or she can talk and then then they think they have a chance and they never will have a chance okay dark-skinned black men will never have a chance with me reason why is just i i don't come from a union where i have a light-skinned mom and a dark-skinned father i have a union of a dark-skinned mother and a father who is my color which is light skin I guess you could technically say, yes, my mother is brown skin, you know. Um, she's the same color as Brandy. And my mother taught me that Brandy was dark skinned. She taught me that she was brown, I mean, dark skinned, and that I was medium. So for a good 11 years, 10 years of my childhood, I identified as medium problem was was i kind of got offended i kind of was bothered okay because there would be incidents and, and black people would say you're light-skinned you're not medium and then i would be like or like not like you're not medium they say you're light-skinned as if it was a good thing right and i would be like no i'm not light-skinned and when i would say when i was a kid that I was not light skinned. I meant I was not, when I think of it, I think I was not Whitney's color. And that means my ex uh, classmate, but I know no one on here understands who that is. So for reference, I'm saying I'm not Alicia Keys or Faith Evans or Tisha Campbell's complexion, you see. Um, and I never wanted to be. Honestly, I've always 
you know, complexion is masculine, and some negativity there, because I, I, when I was a child, I had ideas in my head that were not right, and I don't let them out, like, I don't share them, really, unless I have to, but generally, I don't have to, you know, I don't, Bella, yeah, sorry, my dog, anyway, um, I don't have to usually share my opinions because they generally are all right, you know. Um, if the only time I really have to share my opinions usually is with um, with people who are like white, basically. Usually, it's usually white people, and I, I get down, dirty, and honest with white people on what I think about their complexions. I do. I get down, dirty, and honest, and I won't say them here, but some things about white people is actually an internal hate thing for me, and you wouldn't know from me because you've never seen me when I was a newborn. And that's why I have that. Like, it's an internal kind of, like, personal thing that I kind of worry about as far as myself and having kids and stuff. Um, but, yeah. Generally, I don't usually attack anyone on complexion. Unless it's, like, like I said, with white people, sometimes I do when they're being racist. But generally, I don't talk about it. But, yeah. When I was a kid, basically. So when someone would say I was light skin, I would feel like they were saying, you know, like the yellow bone. And I would be like, heck no, I'm not, you know. I always was like that. I never wanted to be a yellow bone. I never wanted to even be a red bone. Like, like people who were like Tyra Banks color, for example. I, when she would tan, I couldn't see eye to eye with her, basically. And she looked to me a little too, um, she just, it was just like I couldn't see, with, see similarity to her. So, you see, from my point of view, since I was a very young child, I never really aligned with light skin, like yellow bones, brown skins, dark skins. I never aligned with any of them. I kind of thought that medium was just a subset of my color, basically caramel. Lighter than red bone, basically, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to give you a definition of why I came to terms with everything. So, the why I came to terms with everything has to do with why the whole medium thing kind of changed to me in perception because I heard so many people saying they were brown skinned and they were so much darker. They were medium. And then I realized what is the definition of medium and what the definition of brown skin is. It's a complexion of most black people. When I knew that, I was like, well then, I can't be medium. Because for me, I've always known and noticed that among 20 black people, there might be three black people that were lighter than me. Maybe. Maybe four. But on average, I was always in that subset of light skin, basically, if you split it three ways. I'd be like one, the darkest of the light, or the second to the darkest, if you split it in threes, basically. So for me, I don't know, it was always like, well, if you can fare it in that way, the definition of medium being average, then I can't really align with average because I've always known. I'm not the complexion of the average black person. I've always noticed, and I always like this, you know, 
And it makes sense, because when I take the, took a DNA test, I was actually 50% black, right? 52. I've seen people who were like 52%, like 50% black. The like half and half black people, like from Africa, Africans, um, like coloreds, uh, like people from the Dominican Republic and stuff that were 50-50. They usually are like caramel. That's average for them. From what I've seen, like Obama's color is average for them. I'm the same color as Obama. And, I mean, when that, so to me, I kind of think of it like, well, for what I am, am I really that light? No, I'm pretty average, I think. But compared to a black American, and I do identify as a black American because my mother's black and my father's mixed um but i mean i do like compared to black people black americans i don't consider myself average and that's why to me medium doesn't really fit to me because i'm like i'm not average then there's the whole thing of the beautiful paper bag test Okay, beautiful paper bag test. I love it. I love that test because it's so defining, basically. It basically tells you what is and what isn't. For me, I realized when I was like, oh, that's, that's a paper bag? Okay, then I guess I'm light skin. Because me, next to a paper bag, I'm a lot lighter skin than a paper bag. Like, I'm not even... I'm not even a little lighter. I'm like a lot lighter. And everyone knows that someone like Nicki Minaj, Halle Berry, Rihanna are lighter than paper bags, okay? So, I mean, to me, in that term, they are light skinned in those references. Then, the last thing to me that makes brown skin and light skin the the different definitions of them is the line between them basically is red bone now people get so confused about this term okay but to me like personally i've seen it so many times people my complexion people lighter than me like Tia Maui, for example, being called red bones. They are often called red bones, especially people my complexion, like Halle Berry, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, Beyonce, etc. To me, the reason I kind of cringe at this is because of I live this complexion every day I wear it every day okay I go to the store I wear clothing I get my blood drawn and I see my veins and on top of it I have to match my skin with specific makeup so I know generally what what is red and what is not, okay? So someone who is Rihanna's color, Nicki Minaj or Halle Berry, they're often they're often called red bones, right? I don't really see it that way. But I understand what they're trying to say. Um, I don't see those people as exactly red bone because I basically, I match, um, Nicki Minaj's and Halle Berry's complexion, foundation, especially with Halle Berry. Um, and I always need a yellow undertone. I always go with 330, um, 
Maybelline 370 and and Fenty and another foundation and um, what's it called Revlon and all my Maybelline foundations that I usually try are yellow based even when I tan and then when I get so dark I just stop counting <laughs> but um to me that's why I don't particularly see caramel as red brown now people like to say that caramel is darker than red brown okay and they don't seem to know much about what red bone means <laughs> because red bones have another term that is used for them they are called dirty red now some people try to say red bones are like vanessa williams color now how could vanessa williams ever be dirty red it's impossible. Dirty red means you've tanned yourself out of the light skin category, and now you have become brown skinned. That's what dirty red means. It means you've tanned. So when people use the term red bone, and it's related to dirty red, it's going to have to do with the last of the light skins. And that's why caramels are called red bones. Because we have the same basic quality of tanning, of our browner skin, things of that nature. We just have a different undertone. Our undertone makes us look lighter skinned, actually, than red bones when we stand next to them. But when we're not next to them, you won't really know that we are lighter because it's such a small difference and some days we're not even lighter because we may tan and they may have been, they might be right at their birth color and we might be tanning so then we might look darker and they might look lighter but then you'll show a red bone when they tan they get the term dirty red they get the dirty red term better and stronger than any caramel ever does dirty red. We can get to their color, we tan enough, but we it takes us a sec longer, basically, than a red bone to turn dirty red. It takes a quick second for a dirty red to turn, it do, and a red bone to turn dirty red. It does. I've seen it. I've seen people that I was like, oh, you're a similar color to me. Bam, spring, it's not even summer. They're dirty red. They're dirty red. Someone like me, it takes it a, a sec, and then maybe, maybe by August, if you're in the desert, you might turn dirty red. But someone that's red bone is already predisposed to being dirty red, basically. So that's why I think that red bones are darker. And it's not just that I think, oh, I want to think dirt, uh, that red bones are darker skin just because I want to think they're darker skin. No. I've looked it up. I've looked up the term red bone. People list Trina. She's a really dark red bone in my opinion. People list Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston was keyed for being light skin. She's darker than me, but people consider her light skin. Heck, people consider Jay-Z light skin. Just saying. I mean, he's kind of like similar to her. So, I mean, like, I'm not shocked about that. Um, people consider Beyonce light skin, you know. And I consider her a red bone, honestly. Because you set her next to um, Nicki Minaj, she never matches her color. Beyonce always is darker. The thing is, when you shine a light on a red bone, they return, they retain their brown, basically. Because they don't have a yellow undercast that makes it go bright when you go in the light, basically. 
because when you have a yellow undercast, even when you tan sometimes, if you go under the light, your skin goes really bright. While someone who is a red bone will not. They will turn very, very gray. And they get lighter gray and lighter gray and lighter gray. That's all that happens with them. Um, some people I've heard try and say that light skin, um, light skin is only yellow bones and to me i don't know i don't really think it's only yellow bones because i don't really think red bones experience life the same as brown skins generally in my experience Brown skins just love to say, oh, I'm your color. I swear, I swear if I try so hard, I can fit a 330 in Maybelline. I can do it! <laughs> kind of thing, you know. Um, or at least try and squeeze himself into a 334. Because <laughs> you could never do a 330. Um, but, I mean, that's what I experience. I experience a lot of brown skins who want to be caramel they call themselves caramel but i mean if you actually looked at caramel candy it would be nothing like their complexion any time of year <clears throat> um i honestly think people also don't pay attention to the definition of what red bone actually means. It's a meat version to red bone. Red bone means you are not completely cooked. It's a reference to when you weren't born, basically. You know, and it's a reference to basically say, um, you're not well done. Well done is in reference to brown skins. So brown skins are completely cooked, basically, and red bones are a little less in color. So they are basically red at the bone or whatever. So they, it's not, it's basically not medium rare or rare meat, but it's, like medium well, I guess they were trying to reference in that definition. So that's why, to me, red bone actually does mean darker. It doesn't actually mean very light. Because if it meant, like I said, if it meant Vanessa Williams color, then it, there would be no dirty red definition made then there would be no meat definition because it wouldn't be a little well undone because where is the brown on Vanessa Williams skin at all <laughs> and I know this definition is wrong and rude honestly because it's there's another definition when you get darker because brown skin is well done and then darker skin, we get what they're trying to reference with dark skin people, and that's wrong, but I'm not saying that dark skin people are that, I'm saying dark skin women are very beautiful, and honestly, I've always felt like a knockoff to dark skin black women, so I mean, like, I never feel like they or try and imply that they were inferior in any way, um, but yeah, that's generally how I see the line between brown skin and light skin is that to me you have to be lighter than a paper bag now someone was saying well if you're just a little lighter than a paper bag aren't you still medium well I can't speak for those women but I just noticed that a lot of the time they are calling themselves light skin Ciara calls herself a red bone Megan Z Stallion calls herself a red bone Trina calls herself a red bone Whitney Houston complained about being 
um, teeth for being light-skinned. All those people, barely hardly ever lighter than a paper bag. Look at Tyra Banks. She talks about being light-skinned. Beyonce talks about being light-skinned. They're barely lighter than a paper bag in all those cases, okay? But for whatever reason, they consider themselves light-skinned because that's how they were treated. With dark-skinned black men, that's how they were treated. And honestly, from what I've seen, yes, they are treated that way. So, I mean, like, I don't know. We, it's not really their fault that they're treated that way. They can't help how other people treat them. To me, I see it like, well, why don't you talk to the dark-skinned black man who's treating them that way? He's the one doing it. They're not doing a damn thing. So why are you blaming them for being treated like they like they could tell people, don't treat me like I'm light-skinned? It never works, honey. It never does. Honestly, for me personally, I've had it where sometimes people accuse me of being light-skinned like it was a sin, and I, like I, if I didn't, I wasn't admitting to a crime I committed or something. That's how I learned with dark-skinned people, if they're trying to do that to you, just let it be and try and move on to another topic because they have some like hidden hate going on there and you don't want it to grow so you just kind of like move on to something else so they don't talk about it really because we don't really need to focus on our differences you know um so to me that's why i see it that way um also like i said with paper like i think that they are lighter than average and that's how they're treated so yeah um but honestly i wanted to also point out like some people were saying that brown skin women are usually ignored and that's what i'm saying people who are lighter than a paper bag even if it's slightly like in the case of lady houston or like um, Tyra Banks or Beyonce or Ciara, you know, if they're barely lighter than a paper bag, they're still given attention from dark-skinned black men more than any brown-skinned woman and more than any dark-skinned black woman. Honestly, I would say, I think they can still get more attention than many women much lighter than them. But I wouldn't know for sure, because I'm like, I don't live their lives, so I can't say for sure. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure Carrie Hilson can get more attention from dark-skinned black men than, say, someone like... Someone like a tiny or T.I.'s wife, for example. She has much more African features than Carrie Hilson does. But Carrie Hilson is hardly light skinned. She is barely lighter than a paper bag. And, you know, she would still get much more attention. Same with Ashanti. Ashanti would still get more attention than Tiny, or whatever her name is. T.I.'s wife. I forget her name, I'm sorry. But you get my idea of what I'm trying to say here. Um, from my experience, personally, um, with that, I'm, like I said, I'm not as dark as a Megan Z Stallion or um, Whitney Houston or Tyra Banks or whatever those other people are but in my experience yeah I've said this plenty of times and I don't understand why no one even pays attention to this like people always ignore it like dark-skinned black women still seem like they're all angry or something the ones that are all hurt by light-skinned women because it's like for me in my experience I always been like I've never really been bullied by dark-skinned black women. If anything, any problem I've ever had was with LGBT dark-skinned black women, like lesbian black women. I don't know what's going on there, 
but them and like trans dark skinned black women things like that they tend to have an issue but the ones that are like that are like um straight they generally are fine you know i've never been bullied by one um but like i said as far as um bullying and stuff i generally had an experience of negativity with light-skinned women as i said in the past now when i say light skin i'm saying everything that isn't dark skin honey that includes brown skin women brown skin women they are the roughest they are the roughest because they start out like they see you and they're jealous because the dark the brown skin woman is trying to attract a really dark skinned man basically so she can feel light skinned just watch for example there are plenty of people but just watch like there was this one video queen shioma talked about how she would have really dark skinned people around so she could feel light skinned or like the other chick um karis milan would say how she likes African men and she wants attention from them. What do you think that's about? She's preferring dark skinned African men so she can feel light skinned. Um, anyway, so with them, they tend to be really jealous. Like they want, because they, they are so close to you, but they can almost touch you, basically. They're so close to you in complexion. They can almost be you you know and so they have this anger thing like they whatever jealous thing going on and I mean like many times I had just been on the job like it was orientation day and you know they want to cause like issues and stuff already you know and to me, I mean, like, that, I mean, I've dealt with more bullying from them than most any other woman. And also on top of that, like I said, I've dealt with a lot of bullying with um, light-skinned women and women my color. Women my color, like I said, it's, it's worse because of this. We look similar now. Now they're mad because... I'm having the same appeal that they have and maybe I'm doing it better than them you know because for me I don't know even people my own complexion often ask me what am I which is really sucky and sad it's sad when things like that happen because it's like you're my color and you're still doing this it's like they don't like they don't feel a commonality with my face and it's sad. I, I get pissed off about that. Because it's like, can't I feel a home somewhere? You know, can't I feel like there's a place for me? And sometimes you really can't. And you're just stuck out there, like, not fitting in anywhere. But anyway, it's a whole different topic. Um, so like I said, um, with women, my color, it's... It starts to be that whole thing about competition like they're not mad at you because they're not jealous of you for being light-skinned they're more like who can be the whitest who is the whitest fairest of them all basically and now it's not even just about skin tone it's about hair texture it's about facial features you know it's about different things hair color you know and you know different things that just piss them off when you are more other than them basically and so they get really really kind of like angry about it you know and don't know how to deal with it basically so that's mainly been my problem with bullying it's not really been dark-skinned black women and it's not really been like where 
light skinned women will attack you for being darker than them. It's more so, I'm mad he's talking to you and you rejected him and sent him over here. So now he's looking at you still wishing he was with you, but he's with me instead. And now he's looking, comparing, and having issues or whatever, and things of that nature. And like I said, when you're laid in a paper bag and you're light skinned, it really doesn't matter how light you are at this point because none of us are white. And then even if you do have white skin, like I said, some white passing black girls, they still were problematic. Like they were even worse in some cases. Like I said, there's this one girl who was just going around and around and around all over town, just basically telling everybody I had breast implants, which I don't. But wishing, you know, she was upset because, you know, she was, I guess, less than. She was less than everybody, though. I mean, the girl had, like, a big belly, no breasts, and no butt. Like, she had a terrible body. I never understood why she attacked me and not my dark-skinned roommate, who was built like none other, babe. Like, she was so well-built. She was so well-built. Just perfect, like Kim Kardashian had nothing on this shit. Like seriously, she was just coming after little old me because I had bigger breasts. It's like weird, but that to me, I think, had to do with colorism itself. In my experience, like I've seen it, where it's like they won't really go after dark-skinned black women because they feel like they have that in control but if you are darker than them but you're still light skinned you know and you look like something different way different than they look different then they're gonna get mad you know they're gonna get mad because you have that over them you know and you're basically doing what they are trying to do better than they do themselves so that is generally why, for me, in my experience, when it comes to colorism and issues to do with colorism, I kind of side with the light skin side in many ways. Not always. Like, for example, like I said, with, um, with the fact that, like, people making fun of you because you are like white people and stuff and associating you with whiteness i've never been associated with whiteness okay like ever that doesn't happen with me what happens is they tend to think you're more exoticized than someone who is black and white or someone who is just black you're more exoticized because people think you could be part asian or you could be part um, Middle Eastern, or even you're just Hispanic, or just different things or different races that you can be other than, you know, the binary of black and white. And the more different that is to their community, the more desirable it is in the black community because the black community, black men, hate themselves. So anything more different than themselves is more valued. So that's why to me, I have always said that the experience for someone who is brown skinned, who is ignored by black men, but not, um, not chastised for being dark, too dark. And, you know, the experience of light skinned women being attacked by dark skinned women or whatever, or um, being associated with white, I've never really uh, identified with either of those struggles. For me, it's just like, no, neither of those have ever been my problem. You know, my problem is that black men like me all the time. And they always bother me. 
no matter how I look, like literally. And I am the type that doesn't like dark-skinned black men. I see dark-skinned black men as my mother with muscles and taller. So I could never imagine trying to sleep with someone who looks exactly like my mother. So that is generally my problem. Then you get really sore, hurt, angry black men, dark-skinned black men trying to threaten you and trying to intimidate you to like them. Yeah, it's not a good way, it's not pleasant, and this is exactly why I just avoid black people altogether. This video is long enough, I will talk more in my third video on this. So, this is the end of part two. Bye.